Have you noticed you can find watercolor pencils, markers, sticks and even crayons nowadays? In this video you're going to learn about all the differences and similarities and most importantly if you actually need any of them. Watercolor pencils look and feel just like regular color pencils. You hold them the same way, you sharpen them the same way, and you can even erase them. But they have a hidden power inside them that you can unleash with just a little bit of water. The material that holds the pigments together is water soluble, which means that when you add water, the pencil releases even more pigments and creates effects similar to regular watercolor paints, which is not possible with regular color pencils. So are watercolor pencils just regular watercolors in the shape of a pencil? Well, not really. They're not the same, but related and can be used together. Watercolor pencils are usually a lot less expensive compared to regular watercolors and they're also more portable and convenient. You can simply take a brush with a water tank on the go and get creative without creating the usual mess. You can also create small details and fine lines because you can simply sharpen the tip. But you can also use watercolor pencils as an addition to your regular watercolors to add more details, to touch a few things, or simply make the painting look more interesting with additional design elements. How you should use watercolor pencils is really up to you. To not overwhelm you with too much information, I will focus on just a few simple techniques. Watercolor pencils are super versatile. Apart from just drawing on the paper and then simply activating the pigments with a wet brush, what you can also do, you can just dip the tip of your pencil in some water and then you can add an interesting texture to your painting. You can even wet the brush and load it up with pigments directly from the watercolor pencil. One of the ways to mix colors is by layering two colors and then activating them with water. But there are so many other cool techniques that you can try out. I actually made a video a while ago where I show more things you can do with watercolor pencils. So check it out. After watching this video, I will have the link in the description box down below. Now keep in mind that if you want to use a lot of water in your painting, I would rather go for watercolor paper because it's made especially for a water-based medium and you don't really have to worry about paper being ripped or like being too wavy and also the colors will look a lot more vibrant. Also, I have a whole separate video about watercolor paper, what you look out for. I walk you through the whole process, so you should check it out after watching this video. I'll also have the link in the description box down below, so don't forget to check it out. If you're worried about how light fast the watercolor pencils are, I would always check the brand individually and see what pigments they use, what they're saying, if they even say anything about light fastness, if it's something that is important to you. But even though they're called watercolor pencils, you still might not be able to use the exact same techniques as you would do with regular watercolors. Watercolor markers are just regular markers, but can also be used like watercolors if you add water. Compared to watercolor pencils, they contain a lot more pigments and are a lot more vibrant. They can have different nibs from soft to flexible to anything else that allow you to create different shaped lines. Watercolor markers can also be used for loose paintings, for on the go, for example, for urban sketching, if you combine them with a brush that has a water tank, because they are like portable watercolors in a pan, similar to watercolor pencils. And because they're so versatile, you can not only use them as regular markers to draw lines and fill bigger areas, which can take you less time compared to watercolor pencils but you can also create cool effects when you activate the pigments with water. You can go from very dark to a very light color depending on how much water you are using. Since watercolor markers are so vibrant immediately, you might have to play around with them first to get a feel for how much you should apply and how much water you'll actually need. If it's easier for you, you can also use a mixing palette and just scribble the paint onto the mixing palette and then all you need to do is add water and then you can use the marker the same way as watercolors. But keep in mind that when you use the mixing palette, the colors will be a little bit less intense as straight from the marker. Watercolor markers by the brand called Faber Castell, for example, they're designed to behave exactly like watercolors. So you can use different techniques that you would use for regular watercolors, such as glazing, wet and wet, or even create sprinkles if you want, anything that you can think of. 
but keep in mind that there are a lot of markers that can be used as watercolors when you add water, but they can still behave completely different compared to each other. Usually they are designed for hand lettering and for just simple like watercolory effects, so they don't really have to behave completely like watercolors. As I said earlier, if you use a water-based medium and use a lot of water, it's best to go for watercolor paper so it can handle all that water. But how the markers perform also depends on what watercolor paper you're using. On some paper, for example, it was completely streaky, I couldn't dissolve any of the pigments, but on some other paper it was a lot better. I think it really depends on how the paper was made, what ingredients are inside this paper. There's so many factors to keep in mind. Another issue you could have with the markers is smudging. For example, when you outline your artwork with a pencil or with a black fine liner and go directly on top of it. So I would rather go for an aged pencil that is very hard or either use watercolor pencils because they're just melting to your painting and won't be visible later. As I said earlier, there are a ton of different markers that can behave like watercolors but the quality really depends on the brand and how they made it because sometimes they use dyes which means that the paint or like the color will fade over time but it might not be an issue for you if you for example want to scan your work. So make sure you read all the information the brand tells you really carefully. What color sticks might look like regular oil or chalk pastels but they're actually water soluble. With their soft and sometimes creamy consistency, you can apply the color to your watercolor paper and then dissolve it with a wet brush. You can either apply them to wet or dry paper and achieve different results. Some watercolor sticks are a lot less precise with their flat edge and it's not always possible to sharpen them, so it might be a little bit difficult to create fine details. You might wonder what is actually the difference between watercolor sticks and watercolor crayons. In this case, for example, I'm using the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. They are basically exactly the same high quality watercolors, just in the shape of a stick. With regular watercolor crayons, you might not have all this information. You don't really know what ingredients they use, what pigments, how light fast they are, and how the overall quality will be. But if it's something you don't really care about and you just want to like have fun and be colorful and experiment, then they still can be totally fine for you. In my test, it was a little bit difficult to dissolve both on the paper. I even used very smooth paper to do that. So personally, I wouldn't directly draw on the paper and then dissolve it. If I would use the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, I would actually use them like regular watercolors. Because you can either pick up the pigments with your watercolor brush, or you can cut it in smaller pieces and place them into an empty pan, which makes it really versatile and convenient in my opinion. I also tried that with one of my watercolor crayons, but it didn't really work. Now, the price really depends on the brand and the quality. For example, if you would go for the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, you would actually get three full pans with just one stick according to the website. And every stick has the same price, which means you can even get their expensive watercolor tubes for a lot cheaper, which is amazing and makes it worth the money, I think. All right, so do I really need any of that? I think it's important to keep in mind that even though they can behave similar to watercolors, they still have their own personality. So instead of forcing out the exact same behavior and the exact same results as you would expect from regular watercolors, I would rather think about what unique elements they can add to your art and your personal painting style. If you're a complete watercolor beginner and you're just too afraid to use the regular watercolors, you can go, for example, for the watercolor pencils to just get familiar with the concept of pigments and water. And if you're already familiar with watercolors, all those three can be great for mixed media, for on the go, or if you want to save money on the Daniel Smith watercolors. But don't feel like you absolutely have to use them. You can always just test them out and see how you like it because at the end of the day, it really comes down to your personal style and how you like to paint or draw. If you want to learn more about watercolor supplies, you can check out the videos right here. I really hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!